Our session of the 17th Congress is hereby called to order. Senator Francis Kiko Pangilinan will lead us in prayer. This prayer is taken from uh, the book of Ecclesiastes. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to heal, uh, to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search, and a time to give up, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, a time to tear, and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toil I've seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live, that each man, that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure, God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing can be taken from it. God does it so that people will fear him. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Amen. The University of Perpetual Help System Delta Choral will lead us in singing the Philippine National Anthem and then they will also render a song entitled Pangarap na Bituin. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>
Salamat po sa University of Perpetual Health System, Delta Coral. Secretary, please call the roll. Roll call of members, the Honorable Senators Angara, Aquino, Binay, De Lima, Drilon, Ejercito, Escudero, Gatsalian, Gordon, Honasan, Honteveros, Lacson, Ligarda, Pacquiao, Pangilinan, Po, Recto, Soto, Trillanes, Villanueva, Villar, Suveri, Senate President Pimentel. With 20 senators present, the chair declares the presence of a quorum. Majority Leader. <laughs> Mr. President, I move that we dispense with the reading of the journal of the 8th session, Wednesday, August 9, 2017, and consider the same as approved. Is there any objection to the motion? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Mr. President, uh, with the permission of the Chamber, before the reference of business, we will uh, go into the uh, third reading to avail of the presence of the members of the Senate. Uh, also, the numerous guests that we would like to acknowledge, um, we will do that after the third reading. So we better call the attention of our colleagues. Uh, dear colleagues, can we settle down? We are can we settle down because we are going to approve on third reading uh, very important measures. Majority Leader. Thank you. Mr. President, I move for the consideration for third reading of PS Resolution 454 under Committee Report 146. Is there any objection? Hearing none, motion is approved. May we request the Secretary, Secretary to please. the Secretary, please. <coughs> Resolution concurring in the ratification of the Convention concerning protection of the right to organize and procedures for determining conditions of employment in the public service. Mr. President, printed copies of the measure were distributed last August 9, 2017, thereby complying with the three-day rule. I therefore move to vote on third and final reading proposed Senate Resolution Number 454 Resolution concurring in the ratification of the Convention concerning protection of the right to organize and procedures for determining conditions of employment in the public service through a roll call vote. Majority Leader, if you don't mind, uh, can we uh, just remind our colleagues that we need a special uh, majority or number of votes is 16. Yes. Is that correct? 16. We for need 16 this, votes. For yes, for this particular measure. For this Mr. particular President. measure. So, sec Secretary, please conduct the roll call vote. The Honorable Senators Angara, Aquino, <coughs> Binay, Dilima, Drilon, Ercito, Escudero, Gachalian, Gordon, Honasan, Monteveros, Lacson, Ligarda, Pacquiao, Pangilinan, Po, Recto, Soto, yes. Trillanes, Villanueva, yes. <coughs> Villar, Soveri, yes. Senate President Pimentel. I vote yes. <coughs> With 22 affirmative votes, ze zero negative vote, Senate Resolution Number 454 is approved on third reading. Mr. President, I move for the consideration on third reading of Senate Bill 1466 under Committee Report 104. Uh, Majority Leader, our colleagues are raising their hands. Um, Should we uh, recognize them? We recognize Senator Montiveros. Senator Montiveros is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President and Majority Leader. Isang matagumpay na hapon. Kaisa ng mga manggagawa sa pampublikong sektor, 
At bilang isa sa mga co-sponsor, nagagalak ako sa pagsang-ayon at ratifikasyon ng Senado sa ILO Convention 151. Ang tagumpay ng ratifikasyon ito ay bunga ng apat na dekadang pagod at pagigiit ng mga manggagawa sa pampublikong sektor para sa kanilang interes at karapatan. Hari nawang panimula lamang ito ng Senado, kasama ng liderato at kasapian nito sa patuloy na pagbibigay pansin sa kalagayan at kagalingan ng mga manggagawa sa pampublikong sektor. Makakaasa mga kasamang manggagawa sa pampublikong sektor na kaisa nyo ako sa Senado, hindi lamang sa tagumpay na ito, kung hindi sa marami pang laban para sa disenteng trabaho, profesional na burokrasya at mabuting paggugobyerno. Marami salamat, Mr. President. Mabuhay mga kasama. Thank you. Senator Po, do you want to be... Senator Po is recognized. Yes, uh, Mr. President, just to just a manifestation, I believe that the ILO Convention 151, which guarantees our government employees the right to form unions, to negotiate for fair compensation and better work conditions, and to be protected from undue interference and union busing practices, will only serve to strengthen our civil service system na hindi sila matatakot na gawin ang kanilang paniniwala. A strong bureaucracy, Mr. President, means strong institutions, and I believe that this is what our country sorely needs, strong public institutions. We need to establish strong institutions if we want to sustain the gains we made. We need strong institutions if we want to have an effective and efficient government that we all deserve, no matter what the administration situation is. Mr. President, thank you. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Senator Villanueva. Thank you, Mr. President. Tunay nga po na ito ay makasaysayang araw, hindi lamang sa ating bansa, kundi sa ating uh, minamahal na institusyon ng Senado. Tayo po ngayon ang unang bansa sa Asia Pacific na nagratipika ng ILO Convention 151. Kaya congratulations po sa ating lahat. Special thanks to our uh, committee chairperson, Lauren Legarda, and uh, our colleagues who supported this uh, uh, very important measure. Thank you very much, Mr. President. The Minority Leader, Senator Drilon, is recognized. Mr. President, uh, may we recognize the original author of the... Yes, yes. <laughs> Senator Drilon is recognized. In 1987, author of the measure, Mr. President, the Minority Leader. 30 years. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. It is indeed a pleasure and an honor for me to be able to vote on the ratification of this ILO convention. About 30 years ago, 1987 or 1988, I caused the issuance of an executive order which recognized public sector unionism in our government. And I'm glad that after 30 years, here we are today, uh, concurring in the ratification of this very important ILO convention which gives teeth and encouragement to our public sector to go ahead and unionize. So again, uh, with that, Mr. President, as I said, I am so pleased to be able to cast my affirmative vote uh, in concurring the ratification of a concept which we started 30 years ago as Secretary of Labor. Thank you, Mr. President. Congratulations, sir. The Chairman of the Committee on Finance would like to be recognized, Mr. President. Senator Ligarda is recognized. I simply, Mr. President, would like to thank all of my colleagues for supporting the unanimous approval of the ILO Convention, which was actually inked in 1978, so that's uh, 39 years ago. And it is only in May of this year that it was ratified by the President, President Duterte, and the Senate Committee, your Senate Committee on Finance, on Co Foreign Relations, I'm sorry, uh, took quick action and uh, held one hearing. And I would like to thank uh, our colleagues, uh, most especially Senator Minority Leader Drilon, Senator Risa Ontiveros, and Senator Joel Villanueva, who attended the hearing and who gave their uh, views and supported the measure. So with that, I, the Philippines being the first country to concur in the ratification of the ILO Convention in Asia. Thank you, Mr. President. Majority Leader. Mr. President, uh, move for the consideration for third reading of Senate Bill 1466 under Committee Report 104. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. May we ask Secretary to read the title of the measure? 
an act prohibiting the imposition of expiry dates on gift checks and for other purposes. Mr. President, printed copies of the measure were distributed last August 8, 2017, thereby complying with the three-day rule. I therefore, move to vote on third and final reading, Senate Bill 1466, through a roll call vote. Any objection? Hearing none, we proceed with the roll call vote. Secretary, please do so. The Honorable Senators Angara, Aquino, Binay, <coughs> Dilima, Drilon, Ejercito, Escudero, Gatsalian, Gordon, Onasan, Monteveros, Lacson, Ligarda, Pacquiao, Pangilinan, Po, Recto, Soto, Trillanes, Villanueva, Villar, Soveri, Senate President Pimentel. With 22 affirmative votes, zero negative votes, Senate Bill number 1466 is approved on third reading. Mr. President, I move to consider for third reading the following and House Mr. Bills. President, may I just, uh, for the majority manifest, leader. with the permission of the Majority Leader. I withdraw my uh, okay, Senator, statement. Senator thank you, thank you. My apologies to the Majority <coughs> Leader. I would just <coughs> like to thank my colleagues for the support of the measure. This gift check act uh, is timely because it is coming <coughs> towards the Christmas season, and a lot of our uh, Kababayans would be happy to note that there will be no more expiry dates on their gift checks. And those that have gift checks today, will also uh, be part of this law. So thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to consider for third reading the following House bills, all pertaining to the creation and division of barangays in various parts of the country. House Bill 4937, 4942, 2924, 4934, 4938, 4935, 4924, 4943, 4923, 4925, 4927, 4941, and 4940. Is there an objection to the motion for us to consider all of those House bills? There being none, the motion is approved. May we request the Secretary to read the title, the short title of the measures. Secretary, please do so. An act creating a barangay to be known as Barangay Cristo Rey in the municipality of Capas province of Tarlac. An act May we just uh, listen, uh, hear the title of the uh, you, would you like to do it one by one, Mr. President? Or the, I, will, I will move for it uh, one by one. Yes, but, okay. uh, yes but just, this, this is just for information the since we appro approved the motion to consider all of them. So yes. I am directing the Secretary to also read the House Bill number. Short plus titles. Plus short title, yes. So short titles only. Uh, um, uh, omnibus, the, plus omnibus, plus omnibus reading, Mr. President. Short title, is Isa. An act creating a barangay to be known as Barangay Cristori in the municipality of Capas, province of Tarlac. Okay. The, the next, the, the next one. Next, just the barangay and the area. An act creating barang, barangay upper Pugaan in the municipality of Ditsaan Ramain, province of Lanao del Sur. House Bill Number 4940, an act creating a barangay to be known as Barangay Liwon in the municipality of Asipolo, province of Ifugao. House Bill Number 4935, an act creating a barangay to be known as Barangay Don Albino T. Tarok in the municipality of Socorro, province of Surigao del Norte. House Bill Number 4942, an act creating a barangay to be known as Barangay Pudo in the municipality of Natunin Mountain Province. House Bill Number 4938, an act creating a barangay to be known as Barangay Poblacion 3 in the municipality of Villanueva, province of Misamis Oriental. House Bill Number 4937, 
an act creating a barangay to be known as Barangay Kari in the city of Darlac, province of Darlac. <coughs> House Bill number 4923, an act dividing Barangay Pampanga in the city of Davao into three distinct and independent barangays to be known as Barangay Pampanga, Barangay Alfonso Alionto Senior and Barangay Vicente Hison Senior. House Bill number 4924, an act dividing Barangay Magugpo in the city of Tagum, province of Davao del Norte, into five district, distinct and independent barangays to be known as Barangay Magugpo Poblacion, Barangay Magugpo East, Barangay Magugpo West, Barangay Magugpo North, and Barangay Magugpo South. House Bill number 4934, an act creating a barangay to be known as Barangay San Isidro in the <coughs> municipality of Titay, <coughs> province of Sambuanga, Sibugay. House Bill number 4941, an act creating a barangay to be known as Barangay Rizal in the city of Makati. Mr. President, Mr. <coughs> Leader, <coughs> printed copies of the measures were distributed last August 10, 2017, thereby complying with the three-day rule. I therefore move to vote on third and final reading, House Bill 4937. Troy Roll call vote. Is there any objection? We are now going to vote on third reading for House Bill number 4937. Hearing none, motion is approved. Secretary. The Honorable Senators Angara, Aquino, Binay, Dilima, Drilon, Ejercito, Escudero, Gatsalian, Gordon, Honasan, Monteveros, Lacson, Ligarda, Pacquiao, Pangilinan, Po, Recto, Soto, Trillanes, Villanueva, Villar, Zuberi, Senate President Pimentel. 21. With 21 affirmative votes, zero negative vote, House Bill number 4937 is approved on third reading. Majority Leader. President, I move to approve on uh, third reading uh, through a nominal vote, House Bill 4942. Is there any objection to the motion to approve on third reading House Bill number 4942? There being none, motion is approved. Secretary, please conduct the roll call vote. The Honorable Senators Angara, Aquino, Binay, De Lima, Drilon, Ejercito, Escudero, Gatsalian, Gordon, Honasan, Honteveros, Lacson, Ligarda, Pacquiao, Pangilinan, Po, Recto, Soto, Trillanes, Villanueva, Villar, Zuberi, Senate President Pimentel. With 21 affirmative votes, zero negative vote, House Bill number 4942 is approved on third reading. Move to approve on third uh, reading, House Bill 2924 through roll call vote. Any objection? Hearing none, motion is approved. The Honorable Senators Angara, Aquino, Binay, <coughs> Delima, Drelon, Ercito, Escudero, Gatsalian, Gordon, Honasan, Monteveros, Lacson, Ligarda, Pacquiao, Pangilinan, Po, Recto, Soto, Trillanes, Villanueva, Villar, Soviri, Senate President Pimentel. <laughs> With 21 affirmative votes, zero negative vote, House Bill number 2924 is approved on third reading. Move to approve on third final reading, House Bill 4934 to a roll call vote. Any objection? Hearing none, motion is approved. The Honorable Senators Angara, Aquino, Binay, Dilima, Drilon, Ejercito, Escudero, Gatsalian, Gordon, Honasan, Honteveros, Lacson, Ligarda, Pacquiao, 
Pangilinan, Po, Recto, Soto, Trellianes, Villanueva, Villar, Zuberi, Senate President Pimentel. With 21 affirmative votes, zero negative vote, House Bill number 4934 is approved on third reading. Move to approve on third final reading, House Bill 4938, through a roll call vote. Any objection? Hearing none, motion is approved. <coughs> the Honorable Senators Angara, Aquino, Binay, De Lima, Drilon, Hercito, Escudero, Gatsalian, Gordon, Honasan, Monteveros, Lacson, Ligada, Pacquiao, Pangilinan, Po, Recto, Soto, Trellianes, Villanueva, Villar, Soveri, Senate President Pimentel. With 21 affirmative votes, zero negative votes, House Bill number 4938 is approved on third reading. Mr. President, I move to approve on third and final reading House Bill 4935 through a roll call vote. The any, Honorable. Any objection? Hearing none, motion is approved. The Honorable Senators Angara, Aquino, Binay, De Lima, Drilon, Ercito, Escudero, Gatsalian, Gordon, Honasan, Monteveros, Lacson, Ligarda, Pacquiao, Pangilinan, Po, Recto, Soto, Trillanes, Villanueva, Villar, Soveri, Senate President Pimentel. With 21 affirmative votes, zero negative vote, House Bill number 4935 is approved on third reading. Mr. President, I move to approve on third and final reading, House Bill 4924, through a roll call vote. Any objection? Hearing none, motion is approved. The Honorable Senator Sangara Aquino, Binay de Lima, Drilon, Ejercito, Escudero, Gatsalian, Gordon, Honasan, Monteveros, Lacson, Ligarda, Pacquiao, Pangilinan, Po, Recto, Soto, Trillanes, Villanueva, Villar, Zuberi, Senate President Pimentel. With 21 affirmative votes, zero negative vote, House Bill number 4924 is approved on third reading. Move to approve on third and final reading, House Bill 4943 through a roll call vote. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. <coughs> the Honorable Senators Angara, Aquino, Binay, De Lima, Drilon, Ejercito, Escudero, Gatsalian, Gordon, Onasan, Onteveros, Lacson, Ligarda, Pacquiao, Pangilinan, Po, Recto, Soto, Trillanes, Villanueva, Villar, Soveri, Senate President Pimentel. With 21 affirmative votes, zero negative vote, House Bill number 4943 is approved on third reading. Move to approve the third and final reading, House Bill 4923, through a roll call vote. Any objection? Hearing none, motion is approved. The Honorable Senators Angara, Aquino, Binay, De Lima, Drilon, Ejercito, Escudero, <coughs> Gatsalian, Gordon, Honasan, Monteveros, Lacson, Ligarda, Pacquiao, Pangilinan, Po, Recto, Soto, Trellianes, Villanueva, Villar, Zuberi, Senate President Pimentel. With 21 affirmative votes, zero negative vote, House Bill number 4923 is approved on third reading. Mr. President, the move to approve on third and final reading, House Bill 4925, through a roll call vote. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. The Honorable <coughs> Senators Angara, Aquino, Binay, De Lima, Drilon, Ejercito, Escudero, Gatsalian, Gordon, Hunasan, Honteveros, Lacson, Ligarda, Pacquiao, Pangilinan, Po, Recto, Soto, Trillanes, Villanueva, Villar, Soveri, Senate President Pimentel. With 21 affirmative votes, zero negative vote, House Bill number 4925 is approved on third reading. Mr. President, I move to approve on third and final reading, House Bill 4927. Through a roll call vote. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. The Honorable Senators Angara, Aquino, Binay, De Lima, Drilon, Ejercito, Escudero, Gatsalian, Gordon, Honasan, Onteveros, Lacson, Ligarda, Pacquiao, Pangilinan, Po, Recto, Soto, Trillanes, Villanueva, Villar, Soveri, 
Senate President. With 21 affirmative votes, zero negative vote, House Bill Number 4927 is approved on third reading. Mr. President, I move to approve on third and final reading, House Bill 4941, and through a roll call vote. Any any objection? Hearing none. Motion is approved. The Honorable Senators Angara, Aquino, Binay, Dilima, Drilon, Ercito, Escudero, Gachalian, Gordon, Honasan, Ponteveros, Lacson, Ligarda, Pacquiao, Pangilinan, O Recto, Soto, Trillanes, Villanueva, Villar, Soveri, Senate President Pimentel. With 21 affirmative votes, zero negative vote, House Bill number 4941 is approved on third reading. And finally, Mr. President, I move to approve on third and final reading, House Bill 4940, through a roll call vote. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. The Honorable so, Senators yeah. Angara, Aquino, Binay, De Lima, Drilon, Ercito, Escudero, Gachalian, Gordon, Honasan, Monteveros, Lacson, Legarda, Pacquiao, Pangilinan, Po, Recto, Soto, Trillanes, Villanueva, Villar, Soveri, Senate President Pimentel. 21, with 21 affirmative votes, zero negative vote, House Bill number 4940 is approved on third reading. Mr. President, I would like to acknowledge uh, some guests of the Senate. Guests of Senator Zubiri, Mayor Trixie Fernandez of San Enrique Iloilo, Councillor Jonas Kabugin of General Trias Cavite, also guests from the Coalition for the Abolition of Death Penalty in ASEAN, CADPA, together with the ASEAN Youth Forum, with uh, international guests Toshi Kazama, Rafendi Jamin, Silvia Vimish. Also, we'd like to acknowledge the guests of Senator Rotiveros, Alliance of Filipino Workers, Confederation of Independent Unions in Public Sector, Manila Water Employees Union, Manila Water Supervisors Association, Philippine Government Employees Association, Public Services Labor Independent Confederation, Philippine Independent Public Service Employees Association, Public Service International, Trade Union Solidarity Center of Finland, Trade Union of the Public and Welfare Sector of Finland, Nagkaisa, Centro, Kapisanan ng mga Magagawa, GOCCs, GFIs, International Labor Organizations, also um, Frederick Ebert Schiffrey, uh, SEF Group, and the guest of Center Joel Khalid Asan, Director of the International Labor Organization, Lakshmi Vaidhian Nathan, uh, Evelina Petala, and also the guest of Senator Ejercito, Walter Marquez, Manuel Tadeo, Roberto Danates, and Felipe Orieta, Councillors of uh, Sablayan, Occidental Mindoro. I'd like to welcome them to the Senate, Mr. President. Welcome to all of our guests, and of course to the rest of the people in the gallery. Welcome to the Philippine Senate. Mr. President, uh, may I be recognized for a matter of uh, public interest? Uh, the Majority Leader is recognized to speak on a matter of public interest. Mr. President, I initially wanted to deliver this speech last May 15, but uh, time and circumstances conspired to dampen my interest to speak. I thought the passage of two and a half months would make my interest fade away and die. But I was mistaken. Just last August 2nd, another provocation emanated from the same source. And if I continue to be silent, Mr. President, I may be remiss in my duties and my beliefs and my advocacy. So, Mr. President, my dear colleagues, I refer to the provocation generated by renewed remarks just last August 2 by United Nations Special Rapporteurs who took issue and called on our government's war on drugs, alleging human rights violations, supposed uh, presidential threats to bomb schools and indigenous peoples, and summary executions. Three UN experts, Agnes Calamard, Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial Summary or Arbitrary Executions, Mikkel Forst, Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights Defenders, 
and more Debo Bokikyo, special rapporteur on the sale and sexual exploitation of children, said in a, sta in a statement, Mr. President, quote, we are witnessing severe multiple human rights violations, especially against indigenous peoples and human rights defenders. And they continue to say that the government of the Philippines most must urgently address growing reports of human rights violations, including murder, threats against indigenous peoples, and the summary execution of children. Now, Mr. President, how can I, or should I say we, now believe those statements, especially coming from someone who had earlier agreed and shared the belief of one Professor Carl Hart that, quote, there is no evidence shabu leads to violence or causes brain damage. A statement, Mr. President, that is simply baseless and false. My dear colleagues, Mr. President, let me put it this way. Is it possible to arrive in a country you are not familiar with and in a couple of days speak about the decade, decades old problems of that country like you had all the wisdom in the world and even expect to be welcomed hospitably by your hosts? Is it possible, let us say, that upon arrival in a country, for instance, Australia, that you speak about their kangaroo population and what to do to conserve them, or lecture about the many kinds of ice to Eskimos, even though you come from a country without a winter season, or you go to Indonesia and speak about the Muslim Christian mix of their population and why they should not impose the death penalty on their death row drug convicts. Or in Spain, and speak about the island of Gibraltar and tell them how to solve the problem with the British over their claim. A term, Mr. President, has been coined about these visitors. They are called helicopter experts. They alight out of the blue and tell their welcomers what's wrong with them. Nakakahiya, di mo ba? Dudunong-dunong nga sa mga bagay na hindi mo talaga alam. At mas alam nung mga taong iyong binibisita. And yet, that is how we have treated our helicopter experts. Agnes Calamard of the United Nations, Office of the United Nations High Commissioner on Human Rights, who agreed to the idea by sharing in her social media account the declaration of one Professor Carl Hart that, quote, there is no evidence Shabu leads to violence or causes brain damage. Mr. President, in a forum at the University of the Philippines in May, and in a subsequent tweet to her more than 8,000 followers, Dr. Calamard in gist said that no war on drugs by any country is likely to succeed because the effects of drugs are exaggerated by police and scientists. And that further, there is no evidence shabu leads to violence or causes brain damage. I register my vigorous dissent to her claim based on two things, Mr. President. First, expert testimony and statistics. And second, our collective and personal experience. I need not personally contradict Agnes Calamard. The United Nations itself, which she claims to be part of, has contradicted her for us. The UNODC, or the United Nations Office of Drugs and Crime, mentions the risk associated with methamphetamine methamphetamine hydrochloride, or shabu. 
the use are as follows. Short-term users can look, I, I, I will quote from the United Nations. Short-term users can lose their appetite and start breathing faster. Their heart rate and blood pressure may increase and their body temperature may rise and cause sweating. Long-term shabu use can lead to malnutrition, weight loss, and the development of psychological independence. Shabu use sometimes triggers aggressive, violent, and bizarre behavior among users. With large doses, users can feel restless and irritable and can experience panic attacks. Excessive doses of shabu can lead to convulsions, seizures, and death from respiratory failure, stroke, or heart failure. Moreover, Consistent with the study made by the UNODC are the findings of Promises Treatment Centers. Uh, Mr. President, that's a residential drug and alcohol rehabilitation center in California, USA, for almost 30 years. To them, that people who use meth undergo a series of short and long-term changes in their normal brain activity. Among the effects of shabu are euphoria and depression, long-term psychosis, loss of movement control, stroke risks, brain cell damage, and death. This has been supported by the information I received from the Dangerous Drugs Board it itself from the Philippines on the dangers of shabu and shabu-related deaths. According thereto, Mr. President, methamphetamine overdose is a real issue. Meth use can kill. Reinforcing such claim was the data from the Drug Abuse Warning Network that methamphetamine-related deaths reported by medical examiners nearly tripled from 151 in 1991 to 433 in 1994 in the United States. In a more recent data from the San Diego Union Tribune, Meth-related deaths have climbed considerably, consider, considerably since 2008, from 83 fatalities to 212 in 2013. But there was a slight drop down to 169 in 2014. Unfortunately, in the Philippines, our hospital systems have yet to capture these statistics since cause of death is directly attributed to its immediate cause. Case in point, Mr. President, as early as 2008, Dr. Jose Navarro, then Vice President of the Philippine Stroke Society, made mention that the use of methamphetamine is becoming the leading cause of stroke among Filipinos. He added that shabu can cause strokes because it can initiate inflammation of the arteries of the brain. Next to heart diseases, stroke is the number two killer in the Philippines in 2013, based on the report released by the Philippine Statistics Authority in May 2016. And for all we know, many of the stroke cases are secondary to shabu use. Let us hope that this is not the case in the Philippines, because just one year ago, four youths died inexplicably after attending a rock concert does uh, Ms. Calamard has any explanation or expert opinion on the cause of deaths of these four young people? Likewise, impact of shabu, can, uh, shabu use can also be seen in the statistics of admission in UPPGH. According to the 2015 <coughs> Philippine General Hospital National Poison Center data, 59 individuals, 55 males, 4 females, were admitted with a history of methamphetamine use. They were admitted due to various reasons, overdose symptoms, acute intoxication, injuries, injuries due to violence, which is common while uh, patients are high or intoxicated with the substance, attempted suicides, and others. About 15 of the patients 
also have some history of psychiatric confinement already with mental health issues. And one is already schizophrenic. Definitely, had these individuals failed to get immediate medical interventions, interventions, I mean, they would have been fatalities due to sabo use. Mr. President, do we still need more proofs how worse Shabu can do to a man's mental faculties? I'll give you more. Just six months ago, particularly in February of this year, a four-month-old baby was raped by a known junkie in their neighborhood in Karkar City, Cebu. The baby was found bloodied and naked 30 meters from her home. There were lacerations, blood and grass art particles found in the private area of the victim. Oh, in his normal state of mind, who in this normal state of mind, Mr. President, can do such a thing to a baby who is defenseless, weak, and fragile? More recently, specifically last May 2017, <coughs> a policeman who was charged with two counts of parricide by shooting his wife and son 38 times and even stabbed his son in the heart because, quote, he wouldn't die. Tested positive for drugs and admitted that he, has, he had sniffed Shabu days before the brutal killings. Thus, Mr. President, based on the foregoing, undeniably, Shabu can lead to violence. Shabu can cause brain damage and Shabu can kill. To believe otherwise is courting disaster. The drug problem has hit too close to our homes that we know of someone or a friend of someone or a friend of a friend of someone close to us who has experienced the slow but sure deterioration of the body, particularly the brain. <coughs> that marks the tragic road of any full-blown drug addiction and abuse. All we need to do is look into the eyes of a rabid drug user to realize the drug has taken a toll on his perception of his surroundings and of reality. All we need to do is listen to a long-term drug user's incoherent speech to realize the drug has affected the faculties of his brain controlling language and speech. <coughs> All we need is to talk to a drug abuser at length to conclude that his, his non-secretor answers to our questions that the drug has hit hard the gray matter inside his skull and has made his thoughts wander to a dark, ominous hinterland. Alam natin na shabu ay nakakasira ng ulo. Do we listen to our mind and experience? Or believe what a foreigner who does not know us tell us what is wrong with us? Thank you, Mr. President. And I would like to thank my colleagues for listening. Thank you, Majority Leader. Mr. President, I move that uh, my speech be referred to the Committee on uh, Dangerous Drugs. Is there any objection to the motion? Hearing none, uh, the, that's the Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Public Drugs. Order and dangerous the motion drugs. is approved. Thank you. With the permission of the body, I, I move to resume consideration of the following House bills, particularly on the granting of congressional franchise on various broadcasting stations in some parts of the country. House Bill 5063. 5212, 5064, 5177, 5175, 5211, 4636, and 5176. Franchises. Is there any objection to the omnibus motion? Hearing none, motion is approved. Mm. Mr. President, um, 
Last Monday, we already terminated the period of interpolations on the franchise bills just to um, place on record the status of the proposed measure. So with that, I move to open the period of committee amendments to eight House bills, which will be taking up one at a time as agreed. The motion, the omnibus motion is to open the period, period committee for committee amendments. amendments for the eight House bills. But they will be, amendments will be mentioned one at a time. One at any, a time. any objection to this uh, procedure? Hearing none, motion is approved. Mr. President, to introduce the committee amendments, I move to recognize the sponsor of the measure, Chairman of the Committee on Public Services, Senator Grace Poe. Senator Poe is recognized. Mr. President, the following are the committee amendments with minor revisions as to style for House Bill Number 5063, otherwise known as an act granting the Pangasinan Gulf Waves Network Corporation a franchise to construct, install, operate, and maintain radio and television broadcasting stations throughout the Philippines. On page 1, line 9, after the word satellite, insert a comma and the word terrestrial. I so move. Any objection? Getting none approved. On page 2, delete line 17 to 22. I so move. Okay. We are deleting one paragraph. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. On page 2, line 24, before the word adequate, insert the phrase free of charge and insert a comma. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. On the same page 2 and line 24, after the phrase public service time, insert the phrase which is reasonable and sufficient. I so move. Any objection? Any none approved. Mr. President, this will be very long. There's so many, uh, but it's more in the style. But I, I just want to ask for the indulgence and apologize also to our colleagues here. It's just really long. Okay. On the same page 2 and line 24, af after the phrase through the, delete the word said. I so move. Uh, can you can you have that again? Page on the same page two. Page two and line twenty-four. After the phrase through the, delete the word said. I so move. Any objection? Dwin. Hearing none, approved. On the same page two, line twenty-five. After the word facilities, insert the phrase of the grantee. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none approved. Uh, with, the, with the indulgence of the sponsor, the chair declares uh, a minute suspension.
Session is resumed. Majority Leader. Mr. President, um, after conferring with the Chairman of the Committee on Public Services and the Senate President, may I move for the consideration of all the proposed amendments uh, under committee amendments uh, that was proposed earlier, Mr. President? The motion is to reconsider the, the approval. The approval, approval, the the approval. Any, any uh, objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that um, we abandon the proposed committee amendments and open the period of individual amendments. So the motion is to close the period for uh, committee amendments and at the same time, after closing, open the period for individual amendments for this particular bill. For all these House bills, Mr. President. Uh, for all of the House bills yes, that we, we approved uh, to consider. Yes, Mr. President. A any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. May we now recognize the Chairman of the Committee on Public Services for the individual amendments on Senator, all the House bills. Senator Poe is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the first is an act granting the Pangasinan Gulf Waves Network Corporation a franchise to construct, install, operate, and maintain radio and television broadcasting stations throughout the Philippines. On page 1, line 9, after the word satellite, insert a comma and the word terrestrial. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. On page 2, delete line 17 to 22. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. On page 2, line 24, before the word adequate, insert the phrase free of charge and insert a comma. I so move. Any objection? Approved. On the same page, 2, and line 24, after the phrase public service time, insert the phrase which is reasonable and sufficient. I so move. Any objection? Approved. On the same page, 2, and line 24, after the phrase through the, delete the word said. I so move. Any objection? Approved. On the same page 2, line 25, after the word facilities, insert the phrase of the grantee, I so move. Any objection? Approved. On the same page 2 and line 25, between the word the and population, insert the word pertinent, I so move. Pertinent? Pertinent. The pertinent population. Any objection? Not approved. On the same page 2 and line 25, replace the word population with the phrase population slash s or portions thereof. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. On the same page 2, line, 20, line 26, after the semicolon preceded by the word issues, add the phrase and relay important public announcements and warnings as necessity, urgency, or law may require. I so move. Any objection? Approved. On the same page 2, line 26, after the word programming, insert the phrase promote public participation and a semicolon. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. On the same page 2, line 28, after the word enterprise, insert the phrase promote audience sensibility and empowerment through, but not limited to, closed captioning. I so move. Any objection? On page 3, after line 3, insert a new paragraph to read as follows. Public service time referred herein shall be equivalent to 10% of the paid commercials or advertisements which shall be allocated based on need to the executive, legislative, judiciary, constitutional commissions, and international humanitarian organizations duly recognized by statutes, provided that the NTC shall increase the public service time in case of emergency or calamity. The NTC shall issue rules and regulations for this purpose the effectivity of which shall commence upon applicability with other similarly situated broadcast network franchise holders. Hence, the entire Section 4 shall now read as Section 4, Responsibility to the Public. The grantee shall provide free of charge adequate public service time which is reasonable and is sufficient to enable the government through the broadcasting sta stations or facilities of the grantee to reach the pertinent populations 
or portions thereof on important public issues and relay important public announcements and warnings as necessity, urgency, or law may require, provide at all times sound and balanced programming, promote public participation, assist in the functions of public information and education, conform to the ethics of honest enterprise, promote audience sensibility and empowerment through but not limited to, close captioning and not use its station or facilities for the broadcasting of obscene or indecent language, speech, act, or scene, or for the dissemination of deliberately false information or willful misinterpretation to the detriment of the public interest or to incite, encourage, or assist in subversive or treasonable acts. Public service time referred herein shall be equivalent to 10% of the paid commercials or advertisements who shall be allocated based on need to the executive, legislative, judiciary, constitutional commissions, and international humanitarian organizations duly recognized by statutes, provided that the NTC shall increase the public service time in case of emergency or calamity. The NTC shall issue rules and regulations for this purpose, the effectivity of which shall commence upon applicability with other similarly situated broadcast network franchise holders. I so move. Any objection? <coughs> Hearing none, approved. On page three, line four, insert a new section to read as follows. Compliance with labor standards, the grantee, its successors or assignees shall comply with the applicable labor law standards under existing labor laws, rules and regulations, and such other issuance as may be promulgated by the Department of Labor and Employment, taking into consideration the nature and peculiarities of the broadcast industry. I so move. Any objection to the introduction of a new section? Hearing none, approved. On page four, delete lines three to nine. I am withdrawing this amendment. Rationale? During the deliberations when we spoke to a representative of the Philippine Competition Commission, we were told that requiring a bond seemed oppressive and unfair to new players. However, in their written comment, the, PPC, the PCC stated that although the requirement to post a bond is a barrier to entry, it may not be necessary to remove the bond requirement as long as the bond is set at a level that is not unnecessarily high, but also at a level that provides the correct incentive for new participants to deliver services. On the same page, line 10, insert a new section to read as follows. Tax provisions, the grantee. Uh, uh, let's, move, let's move first for the deletion of the section. So the amendment is to delete the section Section 8 on bond. I, no, I am withdrawing this amendment. On page 4, delete lines 3 to 9. I am withdrawing this amendment. Okay. So, uh, okay, we will proceed to the next. Okay. Yes, go ahead, ma'am. On the same page, line 10, insert a new section to read as follows. Tax provisions, the grantee, its successors, or assignees shall continue to be subject to all applicable taxes, duties, fees, or charges, and other impositions under Republic Act Number 8424, otherwise known as the National Internal Revenue Code of 1997, as amended Public Act Number 7160, otherwise known as the Local Government Code of 1991, as amended and other applicable laws. I so move. Any, any objection here in unapproved? On page six, delete lines four to eight. I so move. Any objection, Irene, and approve. On page six, lines 16 and si 15 and 16, delete the phrase starting with the word concerning until the comma after the word term and replace with territory covered by the franchise, the lifespan of the franchise. I so move. Any objection, Irene, and approve. Renumber the sections accordingly. I so move. Any objection to the renumbering? Hearing none, approved. Is that One all? minute suspension, Mr. Uh, session suspended. Mm. 
Lagi ko ibang tawag. Ito. Okay, Mr. President, ready to... So yung tapos na, baka pwede ito na lang dalawa.
Session is resumed. Before we leave, uh, what is this? Uh, House Bill number 5063. Just uh, to be very clear for the record, may I ask the sponsor, uh, what's the status of Section 8 about the bond found on page 4? Um, do we retain it? Yes, Mr. President. Okay. I'm sorry. I'd like to clarify. We meant to say that we are retaining it. We are retaining So that's clearly now uh, reflected on the record. Yes, so, Mr. President. So are we done with the individual amendments for this House bill? Yes, Mr. President. Any other uh, member of the Senate who wants to introduce individual, individual amendments? Okay, there being none. Majority Leader, do we now close the period for individual amendments? Mr. President, I move that we close the period of individual amendments. So, any objection? This is regarding House Bill number 5063. Okay, we're now closing the period for individual amendments. Now move the, uh, open the period of individual amendments. To, just to facilitate the uh, matter, Mr. President, we can move to open the period of individual amendments for all the House Bills, so that the Chairman can start reading for each House Bill instead of us uh, closing yes. the period of individual amendments for each. With the consent of the chamber, an omnibus motion, Mr. President, to tackle individual amendments of House Bill 5212, 5064, 5177, 5175, 5211, 4636, and 5176. Okay, and then uh, if there is, uh, and if there are no more individual amendments from the floor, the period will be closed by the, yeah, automatically by, by the chair, yes. Oh yeah, pursued, uh, okay, so this is our agreement. So any objection? Hearing none, motion is approved. The sponsor, Senator Poe, is recognized for the next House bill. Okay. So an act renewing for another 25 years the franchise granted to Subic Broadcasting Corporation under Republic Act number 7511 entitled an act granting the Subic Broadcasting Corporation a franchise to construct, install, operate, and maintain radio and television broadcasting stations in the Philippines and for other purposes. On page 1, line 8, after the word satellite, insert a comma and the word terrestrial. I so move. Any, any objection? It is not approved. On the same page, line 9, delete the word technological. I so move. Any objection? On page 2, line 16 to 23, delete the lines. The NTC, however, shall not unreasonably withhold or delay the grant of any such authority. The grantee shall not dispose or lease its facilities except to entities with radio or televi television franchise, provided that the grantee shall inform and secure written authorization to proceed from the NTC and report the transaction to the NTC within 60 days after its completion, provided further that the NTC shall determine the corresponding sanction for any violation of this provi provision. I so move. The motion is to delete. Any objection? It is not approved. On page 2, line 25, before the word adequate, insert the phrase free of charge and a comma. I so move. Any objection? Still on page 2, line 25, after the word time, insert the phrase which is reasonable and sufficient. I so move. An objection? On page 2, line 26, after the word facilities and before the comma, insert the phrase of the grantee. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none. Approved. Still on page 2, line 26, delete the word population and replace it with the phrase pertinent populations or portions thereof. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none. On page 2, line 27, after the word issues and before the comma, insert the phrase and relay important public announcements and warnings as necessity, urgency, or law may require. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none. Of On page 2, line 28, delete the phrase such as in community programming. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none. On page 2, line 29, after the word enterprise and the semicolon, insert the phrase promote audience sensibility and empowerment 
through but not limited to closed captioning. I so move. An objection, hearing none, approved. On page three, line five. After the word acts, insert a new paragraph to read as follows. Public service time referred herein shall be equivalent to 10% of the paid commercials or advertisements which, which shall be allocated based on need to the executive, legislative, judiciary, constitutional commissions, and international humanitarian organizations duly recognized by statutes, provided that the NTC shall increase the public service time in case of emergency or calamity. The NTC shall issue rules and regulations for this purpose, the effectivity of which shall commence upon applicability with other similarly situated broadcast network franchise holders. Hence, the entire Section 4 shall now read as, shall now read as Section 4. Responsibility to the public. The grantee shall provide free of charge adequate public service time which is reasonable and sufficient to enable the government through the broadcasting stations or facilities of the grantee to reach the pertinent populations or portions thereof uh, on important public issues and relay important public announcements and warnings as necessity, urgency, or law may require, provide at all times sound and balanced programming, promote public participation, assist in the functions of public information and education, conform to the ethics of honest enterprise, promote audience sensibility and empowerment through but not limited to closed captioning and not use its stations or facilities for the broadcasting of obscene or indecent language, speech, act, or scene, or for the dissemination of deliberately false information or willful mis interpretation to the detriment of the public interest or to incite, encourage, or assist in subversive or treasonable acts. Public service time referred herein shall be equivalent to 10% of the paid commercials or advertisements which shall be allocated based on need to the executive, legislative, judiciary, constitutional commissions, and international humanitarian organizations duly recognized by statutes provided that the NTC shall increase the public service time in case of emergency or calamity. The NTC shall issue rules and regulations for this purpose, the effectivity of which shall commence upon applicability with other similarly situated broadcast network franchise holders. I so move. The pending uh, amendment is the insertion of a new paragraph. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. On page 3, line 6, insert a new section section to read as follows. Compliance with labor standards, the grantee, its successors or assignees shall comply with the applicable labor standards under existing labor laws, rules and regulations, and such other issuance as may be promulgated by the Department of Labor and Employment, taking into consideration the nature and pecula peculiarities of the broadcast industry. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none. On page 3, line 19, delete the word approval and replace it with effectivity. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none. On page 3, line 28, insert a new section to read as follows. Tax provisions. The grantee, its successors, or assignees shall continue to be subject to all applicable taxes, duties, fees, or charges in other impositions under Republic Act No. 8424, otherwise known as the National Internal Revenue Code of 1997, as amended, Republic Act No. 7160, otherwise known as the Local Government Code of 1991, as amended, and other applicable laws. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. On page 4, delete lines 26 to 29. I so move. Any, any objection? Hearing none, approved. On page 5, delete line 1. I so move. Any objection? Any none approved? On the same page 5, line 2, delete the phrase starting from the word franchise until the word that. I so move. Any, uh, any objection? Any none approved? On page 5, delete lines 26 to 28. I so move. 
Any objection? Hearing none, approved. On page six, delete lines one and two. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. On page six, line three, delete the phrase, except for taxes and customs duties, and capitalize A of the word any, I so move. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Renumber all sections accordingly, I so move. Any objection? Rub. Any other individual amendments? Uh, no other amendments okay, for that. From uh, the floor, from the floor. Okay, there being none, so we close the period for individual amendments of this particular House bill. Okay, um, an act renewing for another 25 years the franchise granted to Infocom Communications Network Inc., presently known as Now Telecom Company, under Republic Act Number 7301 entitled an act granting Infocom Communications Network, Inc., a franchise to construct, establish, operate, and maintain mobile radio systems such as radio paging systems, cellular phone systems, personal communication network, and trunk radio systems within and without the Philippines for a period of 25 years and for other purposes as amended, amended by Republic Act Number 7490. On page 2, line 19, after the word NTC, delete the phrase, a certificate of public convenience and necessity, or I so move. This is House Bill number 5177. Any objection to the motion? Hearing none, approved. On the same page 2, line 21, delete the word certificate and replace with permit, I so move. Any objection? On page 4, line 6, after the period, insert the following paragraphs. The grantee shall improve and extend its services in areas not yet served and in hazard and typhoon-prone areas that shall be determined by the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council in coordination with the NTC. The grantee shall also improve and upgrade its equipment, facilities, and services in order to ensure effective compliance with the objectives of Republic Act Number 10639 or the Free Mobile Disaster Alerts Act. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none. On page 5, line 1, after the word B, insert the phrase extended end. I so move. Any objection? None. On the same page 5, line 10, after the word act, end the period, Delete the word non-acceptance and insert the, the phrase refusal or failure to accept the franchise. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none. On the same page 5, line 12, insert a new section which shall read as follows. Tax provisions. The grantee, its successors or assignee shall be liable to pay the same taxes on their real estate buildings and personal property exclusive of this franchise as other persons or corporations which are now or hereafter may be required by law to pay except radio telecommunications and electronic communications equipment, machinery and spare parts needed in connection with the business of the grantee which shall be exempt from customs duties, tariffs and other taxes as well as those declared exempt in this section. In addition thereto, the grantee, successors, or assignees shall pay a value-added tax on all gross receipts of the business transacted under this franchise by the grantee, its successors, or assignees in the Philippines in lieu of any and all taxes of any kind, nature, or description levied, levied established, or collected by an authority whatsoever, including but not limited to city, municipal, provincial, or national, from which the grantee is hereby expressly exempted, effective from the date of the effectivity of this act, provided that the grantee, its successors, or assignees shall continue to be liable for income taxes payable under Title II 
of the National Internal Revenue Code pursuant to Section 2 of Executive Order Number 72, unless the latter enactment is amendment or repealed, in which case amendment or repeal shall be applicable thereto. The grantee shall file the return with and pay the tax there on, on the Commissioner of Internal Revenue or his duly authorized representative in accordance with the National Internal Revenue Code, and the return shall be subject to audit by the Bureau of Internal Revenue. I so move. An objection. Probe. On the same page 5, line 20, insert a new section which shall read as follows. Mobile number portability. The grantee shall provide mobile number portability, MNP. It shall set up a mechanism for the purpose of implementing MNP. It shall interconnect directly or indirectly with the infrastructure facility systems or equipment of other telecommunications franchise grantees. It shall not install network features functions or capabilities that will impede the implementation of a nationwide MNP system. The NTC, NTC shall issue rules and regulations for this purpose, the effectivity of which shall commence upon applicability with other telecommunications franchise grantees. I so move. An objection, eating none. On the same page 5, delete lines 20 to 27. I so move. An objection. On page 6, delete lines 1 and 2. I so move. An objection. On page 6, delete line 17 to 21. I so move. An objection. Still on the same page 6, line 22, delete the phrase ipso facto revoked, provided finally that. I so move. Any objection? Anything none? On the, on the same page, line 23, after the word is, insert the word validly. Hence, the entire Section 14 shall now read as follows. Section 14, sale, lease, use of rock, or assignment of franchise. The grantee shall not sell, lease, transfer, grant the use of rock of, nor assign this franchise or the rights and privileges acquired thereunder to any person, firm, company, corporation, or other commercial or legal entity, nor merge with any other corporation or entity, nor shall transfer the controlling interest to the grantee, whether as a whole or in parts, and whether simultane simultaneously or contemporaneously to any person, firm, company, corporation, or entity without the prior approval of the Congress of the Philippines, provided that any person to which this franchise is sold, transferred, or assigned shall be subject to the same conditions, terms, restrictions, and limitations of this act. I so move. An objection, hearing none. On page 7, line 5, insert a new section which shall read as follows. Compliance with labor standards. The grantee, its successors or assigns shall comply with the applicable labor standards under existing labor laws, rules and regulations, and such other issuances as may be promulgated by the Department of Labor and Employment taking into consideration the nature and peculiarities of the telecommunications industry. I so move. Any objection, hearing none. On the same page 7, line 14, delete the word five and replace it with in the amount of one million pesos. I so move. Any objection, hearing none. On the same page 7, line 15, delete the phrase 100 pesos, 500. I so move. Any objection, Irinan? On the same page in line 15, delete the period and replace it with a comma, then insert the phrase, the effectivity of which shall commence upon applicability with other telecommunications franchise grantees, provided that in the interim, the grantee shall be liable to pay the fine of 500 pesos per working day of non-compliance. I so move. Any objection, Irinan? On the same page, line 17, after the word NTC, delete the period and replace with the phrase and the same shall be sub shall be remitted to the national treasury hence the entire section 17 shall read as shall read section 17 penalty clause failure of the grantee to submit the requisite annual report to congress shall be penalized by a fine in the amount of 1 million pesos per working day of non-compliance, the effectivity of which shall commence upon applicability with other telecommunications franchise grantees, provided that in the interim, the grantee shall be liable to pay the fine of 500 pesos per working day of 
compliance. The fine shall be collected by the NTC from the delinquent franchise grantee, separate from the repertorial penalties imposed by the NTC, and the same shall be remitted to the National Treasury. I so move. Any, uh, any objection, hearing none? On page 8, line 6, after the period, insert a paragraph which shall read as follows. All other provisions of Republic Act number 7301 and Republic Act 7940, which are not inconsistent with the provisions of this Act and remain unrepealed, shall continue to be in full force and effect, provided that all pending suits of whatever kind or nature, whether civil, criminal, or administrative, filed by the or against the grantee in connection with the provisions of Republic Act 7301 or Republic Act number 7940 shall continue to be prosecuted under the said law, provided further that all valid and existing liabilities, fines, penalties, surcharges, and or unpaid tax assessments of the grantee from March 26, 1992 until the until the effectivity of the new law shall remain valid and enforceable under Republic Act number 7301 and Republic Act number 7940. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none. We number the sections accordingly. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none, we renumber the sections accordingly. Mr. President, I have additional individual amendments to House Bill number 5177. I am adopting as my own the amendments of the Philippine Competition Commission, which are good minority floor leader mentioned on the floor previously. On page one, line seven, after the word, insert the phrase, lease, purchase, operate, and carry in the business of providing telecommunications, including electronic communications and electronic communication services throughout the Philippines and between the Philippines and other countries and other territories, including outer space as public interest may warrant for public, domestic, and international telecommunications is hereby extended for 25 years from the effectivity of this act. For this purpose, the grantee is hereby granted the right to construct, establish, install, maintain, lease, purchase, and operate the corresponding transmitting and receiving stations, satellite lines, systems, networks, local gateways, domestic exchanges, and platform as it may consider necessary, convenient, or reasonable. In this act, the term telecommunications shall include electronic telecommunications. In addition, the following terms shall have the meanings set forth now below. Electronic communications network shall mean A, a transmission system for conveyance by means of electrical, magnetic, or electromagnetic energy of signals of any description and any of the following as are used by the persons providing the system and in association with it for conveyance of the signals, one, apparatus comprising the system, two, apparatus used for the switching and routing of the system, and three, software and stored data. Electronic communication, communication service shall mean a service consisting in or having as its principal feature the conveyance by means of electronic communications network of signal, signals. It includes wired, wireless, fixed, cellular, and or mobile or integrated telecommunications, computer electronic services, including value-added services or technologies related to such service, which are at present available or made available through technological advances or innovations in the future in fixed and mobile stations. I so move. So the, the proposed amendment is to insert a paragraph and including some uh, definition. So where, where will it start? Where will, you, where will it be inserted, ma'am? Uh, on page one, line seven, after the word maintain, insert the phrase. This is um, after consultation with the PCC, Mr. President, and yeah. also be able to adapt with technology. So, and so we insert it after the word maintain, and then after your amendment, we will continue with for, for commercial purposes. Is that, is that the... Yes, Mr. Is President. that what will happen? Yes. Okay, any, any objection? Hearing none, approve. On page two, delete lines one to eight. I so move. Deletion. Any objection? On page. Hearing, hearing none approved. On page four, line eleven, delete the phrase "the rate to be charged by the." I so move. 
on page 4, line 11, delete the phrase, the rate to be charged by the, I so move. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. On page 4, delete lines 12 to 14, I so move. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. So we deleted the, actually the last sentence of section 6 of the, of the yes. working draft. Yes, yes. Mr. President. Yes, uh, we deleted the sentence, Mr. President. The rates to be charged by the grantee shall be unbundled, separable, and distinct among the services offered and shall be determined in a manner that regulated services do not subsidize. The unregulated ones, according to the PCC, the obligation to charge unbundled separate and distinct distinct rates is absent in SMART's franchise. While it may be pro-competitive if it is applied to all operators, prohibiting now from bundling and cross-subsidizing without imposing the same restriction upon SMART gives the dominant incumbent an undue advantage. The Commission recommends that the restrictions on subsidi subsidization, bundling, or similar practices instead be considered in the context of Amendment to Republic Act Number 7925, otherwise known as the Public Telecommunications Policy Act of the Philippines, so that the restrictions could be at the same time imposed upon all players in the industry. That's the explanation. Thank you, ma'am. On page 6, line 12, delete the phrase nor merge. I so move. Page 6, line 12, delete the phrase nor merge. I so move. Any, any objection? Hearing none, approved. On page 6, line 13, delete the phrase, with any other corporation or entity. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. On the same page 6, line 16, after the word Congress, insert the phrase, and compliance with legal requirements stipulated in other statutes. I so move. After what word, ma? After the word, uh, with legal requirements stipulated in other statutes. On page 6, line 16, after the word Congress, insert the phrase and compliance with legal requirements stipulated in other statutes. But, the, but they're still of the Philippines. It, uh, it, will, not, it will not read well. Line 17, delete na yun. Deleted na yun. Then, uh, Mr. President, then we will just... Um, we will just insert the phrase after the word Philippines. Yes, uh, after the Congress of the Philippines, yes. Yes. So, any objection? The, ob the amendment has already been uh, read by the sponsor. Hearing none, approved. Uh, Mr. President, the explanation is smarts, smarts franchise does not require the approval of Congress prior to a merger with another corporation or entity. In fact, the prohibition against mergers without congressional approval was found in SMART's Franchise Renewal, RA number 10926. Incorporating the prohibition in NOW's franchise extension appears to put it at an even greater disadvantage relative to SMART. Since prohibiting NOW Telco, uh, Telecom from merging with, en with any other corporation or entity is a potential barrier to its expansion. Such a prohibition makes it more difficult for small players to compete with the larger firms. Any merger is also subject to the statutory power of review of the Commission over mergers and acquisitions as provided in RA 10667 or the Philippine Competition Act. On page 7, uh, that, that's the explanation, Mr. President. Thank you. So continuing on page 7, line 18, delete the phrase, except for taxes and customs duties. And capitalize A in the word any. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. This phrase is not found in the equality clause of SMART's franchise, Mr. President. That is all for this 
uh, House Bill Number Five One Seven Seven, Mr. President. And in the from the uh, from the floor, any individual amendments? There being none, we close the period uh, for individual amendments for House Bill Number Five One Seventy Seven. For the next, um, for consideration, a uh, period of individual amend individual amendment is uh, House Bill Number Four Six Three Six otherwise known as an act granting the Iloilo Baptist Church, Inc., a franchise to construct, install, establish, operate, operate, and maintain radio and television broadcasting stations in the Philippines. On page 1, line 9, after the word satellite, insert a comma, and the word terrestrial, I so move. Any objection? On the same page, line 10, delete the word technological, I so move. Any objection? On the same page in lines 12 to 13, after the word stations, delete the comma and the phrase and to install radio communication facilities for the grantee's use and its broadcast services and replace it with a period. I so move. Any objection? On page 2, line 13, after the word without, insert the word having. I so move. Any objection? On page 2, line 17, before the word adequate, insert the phrase free of charge and insert a comma. I so move. Any objection? On the same page and line, after the phrase public service time, insert the phrase which is reasonable and sufficient. I so move. Any objection? On the same page and line, after the phrase through the delete the word said i so move any objection on the same page line 18 after the word facilities insert the phrase of the grantee i so move any objection on the same page and line delete the word population and replace it with the phrase pertinent populations or portions thereof i so move any objection on the same page, line 19, after the word issues, add the phrase and relay important public announcements and warnings as necessity, urgency, or law may require. I so move. An objection, hearing none. On the same page and line, after the word programming, insert a semicolon, the phrase promote public participation. I so move. An objection. On the same page, line 25, after the semicolon, proceed the word Preceding the word enterprise, insert the phrase promote audience sensibility and empowerment through but not limited to closed captioning. I so move. Line 21. Oh. Line 21, ma'am? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, any objection? Irina, approve. On page 2, after line 25, insert a new paragraph to read as follows. Public service time referred herein shall be equivalent to 10% of the paid commercials or advertisements which shall be allocated based on need to the executive, legislative, judiciary, constitutional commissions, and international humanitarian organizations duly recognized by statutes, provided that the NTC shall increase the public service time in case of emergency or calamity. The NTC shall issue rules and regulations for this purpose, the effectivity of which shall commence upon applicability with other similarly situated broadcast network franchise holders. Hence, the entire section four shall now read as follows. Section four, responsibility to the public. The grantee shall provide free of charge adequate public service time, which is reasonable and sufficient to enable the government to the broadcasting stations or facilities of the grantee to reach the pertinent populations or portions thereof on public, public of on important public issues and relay important public announcements and warnings as necessity, urgency, or law may require, provide at all times sound and balanced programming, promote public participation, assist in the functions of public information and education, conform to the ethics of honest enterprise, promote audience sensibility and empowerment through, but not limited to, closed captioning, and not use its stations or facilities for the broadcasting of obscene or indecent language, speech, act, or, or scene, or for the dissemination of deliberately false information or willful misinterpretation to the detriment of the public interest or to incite, encourage, or assist in subversive or treasonable acts. Public service time referred herein shall be equivalent to 10% of the paid commercials or advertisements which shall be allocated and based on need to the executive, legislative, judiciary, constitutional commissions, and international humanitarian organizations duly recognized by statutes, provided 
that the NTC shall increase the public service time in case of emergency or calamity. The NTC shall issue rules and regulations for this purpose, the effectivity of which shall commence upon applicability with other similarly situated broadcast network franchise holders. I so move. Any objection, hearing none? On the same page, line 26, insert a new section to read as follows. Section 5. Compliance with labor standards. The grantee, its successors, or assignees shall comply with ap applicable labor standards under existing labor laws, rules, and regulations, and such other issuance as may be promulgated by the Department of Labor and Employment, taking into consideration the nature and peculiarities of the broadcast industry. I so move. Any objection? It is not approved. On On page four, delete the lines one and two. I so move. Page four, delete the lines one and two. I so move. Any objection? Hearing on, none, approve. On the same page, line three, insert a new section to read as follows. Tax provisions. The grantee, its successors, or assignees shall continue to be subject to all applicable taxes, duties, fees, or charges, and other impositions under Republic Act Number 8424, otherwise known as the National Internal Revenue Code of 1997, as amended. Republic Act Number 7160, otherwise known as the Local Government Code of 1991, as amended, and other applicable laws. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Can we, can we go back to the previous amendment, uh, which deleted on page four lines one and two? It affects uh, section eight on the bond. Uh, what will now happen to the paragraph? Uh, we retained it, uh, Mr. President. It's the same provision that we discussed earlier so that we are retaining No. So can we reconsider the deletion of lines one and two on page four? Because Yes, yes, Mr. President. We should, we should reconsider the deletion because it, it when we deleted it it, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, we it left the paragraph hanging uh, there's no complete uh, sentence or complete thought no we, we do not wish to delete we, we are retaining it as um, so I would rather so, yes, even I, uh, the, so the uh, the chair moves that uh, we reconsider the amendment we approved earlier about deleting lines one and two on page four. So can we do that, Ma Madam Sponsor? Y yes, yes. Okay, is there any objection? So that uh, section eight is on the bond is still retained uh, yes. as is. Uh, any yes, any objection? Any objection? Any approved? On page five, delete lines 15 to 19. I so move. We are deleting the, penal the section 14 penalty clause. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Renumber the sections accordingly. I so move. Okay, any any objection to the renumbering? Hearing none. Mr. President, perhaps uh, we still have about one. We have uh, four more franchises here. Perhaps we can take one last. Yes. So uh, the sponsor is done with her individual amendments for House Bill Number what was this? Four six three six. Any from the floor? There being none, uh, the chair closes the period for individual amendments for this particular House Bill. Majority Leader. The sponsor, I think, is willing to uh, reschedule the four other bills. Yes, Mr. President, uh, in the meantime, I move to suspend consideration of House Bills 5175, 5211, 4636, and 5176. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Now, for the four, 
this will the sponsor correct uh, me if I'm wrong. House Bill 5063, 5212, 5064, and 5177 are done. Not, not 5212. Hmm? Uh, <coughs> we, Majority Leader, we completed the period for individual amendments for the following House Bills. Yes. 5063. Okay. 5064. Mm hmm. 5177 yes. and 4636. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. President. Then, then I stand corrected. I move to resume my, my, my I move to, um, uh, to reconsider my earlier motion for the suspension of the four house bills I mentioned. Okay. Move to, to reconsider. Yes, okay. There will be no objection. We have to reconsider. All right. Now, Mr. President. Individual amendments have been done for 5063, 5064, 5177, and 4636. So I move to approve on second reading, House Bill 5063. Any objection? Hearing none, approve. I move to uh, approve on second reading, House Bill of five, House Bill 5064. Any objection? Hearing none, approve. Move to uh, approve on second reading, House Bill 5177. Any objection? Hearing none, approve. I move to approve on second reading, House Bill 4636. Any objection? Hearing none, approve. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to suspend consideration of House Bill 5212, 50, I'm sorry, 52, 5212, 5175, 5211, and 5176. Any objection to the uh, suspension of the consideration of these four House Bills? There being none, approved. Mr. President, I move to resume consideration of Senate Bill 1311 under Committee Report Number 33 with the indulgence of Senator Escudero, Mr. President. <laughs> Is there any objection? <coughs> I'm looking at the good senator from Sotsogon. Okay, there being none. <laughs> Mr. So President, this is the measure, ease of doing business. The parliamentary status is that we, before we adjourn for the first regular session last May 31st, uh, the sponsor, Senator Mixubiri, submitted an amendment by substitution to huh? Senate Bill 1311 by incorporating the provisions of his bill with the anti-red tape act measures and additional individual amendments. Considering that um, there are some who have made reservations, May I move for the continuation of the period of individual amendments based on the clean copy of the bill as amended by substitution that was distributed to the members last June 20, 2017. So moved, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Move to recognize the sponsor, Senator Mixubiri, to introduce additional individual amendments, uh, Mr. President. Senator Subiri is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, I believe Senator Frank Dulon, uh, distinguished minority leader, has a individual amendments to, to make. Um, may I ask for a one-minute suspension to ask? Session suspended.
Ready to resume, Mr. President. Session is resumed. So may I move now to recognize Senator Mixubiri and the Minority Leader, Senator Franklin Rilon, based on um, the co clean copy of May 31, 2017, Mr. President. So, Senator Subiri, sponsor, Senator Drillon, uh, are both recognized. Mr. Uh, Mr. President, uh, before I ask the gentleman uh, to yield the floor, uh, may we know what is the parliamentary status of this bill? Uh, the reason I'm asking that, Mr. President, because if you recall, as the records will show, uh, the uh, original bill, uh, the original committee report, uh, when presented to the floor, with the consent of the chamber, uh, Senate, the sponsor was allowed to introduce committee amendments and the understanding was that the bill with the committee amendments will be the basis of the interpolation. Mm -hmm. That is how I recall. Uh, That's so correct. given that, if that is correct, Mr. President, may we know exactly the status, the parliamentary status of this measure? We're ready, Mr. President. I just want to know what is the, exactly is the parliamentary status. Oh, Mr. President, on, on my part, uh, we're done with the committee amendments. We are now accepting uh, individual amendments, Mr. President. So can we ask questions on the basis of the committee amendments, Mr. President? Because we had the uh, interpolation on the original bill before the committee amendments uh, terminated with the understanding that questions can be raised on the basis of the version now containing the committee amendments. It's all right, Mr. President. This is so, an agreement with uh, Senator Dillon. It's so right. we are now going going to uh, work on the draft called uh, labeled amended copy as of May 31, 2017. That's correct, Mr. This President. This is now what we are going to amend. Yes, Mr. Okay. President. And uh, is that clear there was an understanding that during the committee, uh, or to individual amendments rather, that the questions may be asked by the good gentleman, minority leader, good gentleman from Iloilo. Okay, without so understanding, uh, Mr. President, my first question is, what is the intent of uh, Senate Bill 1311? Is it to repeal uh, uh, Republic Act 9485? Uh, no, Mr. President, uh, it's to uh, further strengthen uh, the ARTA law. And we included provisions on the ease of doing business uh, bill that we had e earlier filed. And we incorporated it into the expanded anti-red tape. So at the end of this uh, debate, and assuming that this measure is passed, what will come out now will be uh, Republic Act 9485 as amended. That is correct, Your Honor. So, so that, uh, we, th that is my understanding that uh, the uh, uh, Anti-Red Tape Act of 2007 will continue to exist as amended by whatever is the Republic Act that will be assigned to this bill that we are now debating upon. Th that's correct, Your Honor. All right. <clears throat> now, uh, given that, uh, Mr. President, uh, may we know, and on, on page... Uh, Uh, given that uh, manifestation of the uh, of the gentleman from Bukidnon, we wish to manifest that as uh, that we will propose amendments simply to uh, to to uh, uh, in pursuit of that of that uh, or in in order that the Arta will not be repealed and there will only be one statute left, assuming that we pass this, and that is. Arta as amended. Th that's correct, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Uh, <coughs> before I go into, we go into uh, amending the bill uh, uh, in accordance with the manifestation of the sponsor, um, there is just one uh, issue that this representation would have. And if we can turn to page 12, uh, Mr. President, of the bill. Yes, Mr. President. Uh, this is uh, um, section 16, uh, line 6. Yes, Mr. President. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, provision reads that the, uh, the Competitiveness Bureau 
uh, in the Department of Trade and Industry is hereby renamed as Business Anti-Red Tape and Competitiveness Bureau, here and referred to as the Bureau, to be headed by a Bureau Director. For the record, Mr. President, at the, uh, as we are uh, uh, debating on this bill, is the Competitiveness Bureau not headed by a Bureau Director? It is, Your Honor. Mr. And therefore, the phrase <clears throat> to be headed by a Bureau Director is a surplusage. Yes, Mr. President. Uh, as I've discussed earlier with the Minority Floor Leader, it's not necessary. And I agree with his position on that. All right. Um, will there be additional personnel uh, with the uh, uh, new office now, uh, the, the uh, uh, Anti-Red Tape and Competitiveness Bureau? According to the, our friends from the DTI, uh, Sorry? Your Honor, according to our uh, resource persons to the DTI, they're ready to add additional personnel from their rank and file to assist the Bureau. But this doesn't, uh, it, 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 in other words, it will not stop the DTI from increasing the number of uh, personnel for the Bureau, uh, Your Honor. Well, uh, uh, that is, <laughs> you know, pending before this chamber is the right-sizing right -sizing. Uh, bill of the chairman of our committee on finance, and maybe that is a matter that uh, uh, will be brought up at the appropriate time. In any yes. case, uh, having said that, we will now propose certain amendments just so that the bill can be uh, passed in the form that uh, will uh, conform to the intent. Uh, and so if it is proper at this stage, can we now propose individual amendments, Mr. President? Yes, we are in the period uh, of individual, uh, for individual amendments for this particular measure. Uh, for the record, we will be using as a reference the amended copy of the bill, of Senate Bill 1311 uh, as of May 31, 2017. Is that That's correct, Mr. President. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> On line one, Page one, we move to insert the following phrase before line one. Section one of Republic Act number 9485 is hereby amended to read as follows. And then uh, that, that's a proposed amendment. Accepted, Mr. President. Uh, it's accepted, Mr. President. Any objection? On the same page, line four, insert the following between lines three and four. Lines three and four. Section two. Section two of Republic Act 9485 is hereby amended to read as follows. Accepted, Mr. President. Any objection? On page one, line 15, insert the following um, on line 14, section 3, period. Section 3 of Republic Act 9485 is hereby amended to read as follows. Accepted, Mr. President. Any objection? On page 2, line 4, uh, insert the following, insert the following, section 3. Yeah. Section oh, four, Siguro. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, insert the following line on, sec uh, on, on line three. Insert the following on line three. Section four. Section four of Republic Act 9485 is hereby amended to read as follows. We accept, Mr. President. An objection? On uh, page three, line 17. Insert the following on line 16. Section 5. Section 5 of Republic Act 9485 is hereby amended to read as follows. Uh, we accept, Mr. President. Any objection? On the same page, page 3, between lines 36 and 37. Uh, insert the following, section 6. Section 6 of Republic Act 
Number 9485 is hereby amended to read as follows. <coughs> we accept, Mr. President. An objection. On page 4, between lines 12 and 13. <coughs> Section, insert the following, Section 7. A new Section 7 of Republic Act 9485 will now read as follows. We accept, Mr. President. Any objection? Amen. Okay. Uh, on the same page between lines 13J and 14, insert the following. Section 8. Section 7 of Republic Act 9485 is now renumbered as Section 8 to read as follows. Can we accept, Mr. President? An objection? On, uh, on, the, on the same page, um, between lines 19 and 20, insert the following. Section 9. Section 8 of Republic Act 9485 is now renumbered as Section 9 and is hereby amended to read as follows. We accept, Mr. President. An objection. On page 6, on page 6, line 26. Section 10, in, uh, line 26, the following is, is the amendment. Section 10, Section 9 of Republic Act 9485 is renumbered as Section 10 uh, to read as follows, and is hereby amended to read as follows. We accept, Mr. President. Any objection? On page 7, line 21, insert the following, section 11. Section 10 of Republic Act 9485 is renumbered as section 11 and is hereby amended to read as follows. We accept, Mr. President. Any objection? Page 9, <clears throat> before line 1, insert the following, section 12. Section 11 of Republic Act 9485 is hereby amended, is hereby renumbered as section 12 and will now read as follows. We accept, Mr. President. An objection. <coughs> On page 10, line 12. I'm sorry, on page 10, line 11, insert the following, section 13, period, section 12 of Republic Act 9485 is hereby renumbered as section 13 and will now read as follows. We accept, Mr. President. Any objection? At, uh, still on page 10, uh, between lines 35 and 36, insert the following, section 14. Section 13 of Republic Act 9485 is hereby amend, renumbered as section 14 and will now read as follows. We accept, Mr. President. An objection. On page 11, between lines 33 and 34, insert the following, section 15. Section 14 of Republic Act 9485 is hereby renumbered as Section 15 and will now read as follows. We accept, Mr. President. An objection? Uh, on page 12, between lines 5 and 6, insert the following, Section 16. Section 15 of Republic Act 9485 is by re, re, hereby renumbered as Section 16 and will now read as follows. We accept, Mr. President. An objection. 
on line 7 on the same page 12. Delete the phrase on line 7, delete the phrase under the ease of doing business group of and in lieu thereof just simply say in, I-N. I -N. We accept, Mr. President. Any objection or not approved? Uh, <clears throat> on line 10, delete the phrase to be headed by a bureau director. I repeat, uh, on line 10, delete the comma after bureau and the phrase to be headed by a bureau director. We accept, Mr. President. Any objection? Um, on line 12 of the same page, uh, delete the phrase, complement the functions of the Civil Service Commission, open paren, CSC, close paren, by. Uh, yes, we accept, Mr. President. It will be now. Uh, and then the on change. line 13, instead of Monitor. monitoring, we yes. just say monitor. monitor. Okay. Yes, Mr. President. So any any objection? Uh, on line 16, delete the phrase Civil Service Commission, CSC, and simply say appropriate office. We, we accept, Mr. President. Any objection? On page 13, line 14, um, insert the following, section 17. Section 10 of Republic Act 9485 is renumbered as section 17 and will now read as follows. We accept, Mr. President. An objection. On the same page, line 28. Insert the following, section 18, period. Section 11 of Republic Act number 9485 is renumbered as section 18 and will now read as follows. We, we accept, Mr. President. An objection. On page 14, uh, line 17, insert the following, section 19, period. Section 12 of Republic Act 9485 is the number that section 19 and will now read as follows. We accept, Mr. President. An objection. Can we have one minute suspension? Session suspended. Ready to resume, Mr. President. Sessions resume. On the same page 14, line 25, delete the phrase for the purpose of harassing the applicant. On what page are in line? On again? page 14, Your Honor, yes, Mr. Sir. President, line 25, delete the phrase for the purpose of harassing the applicant. Uh, one second, Mr. President, let me just look for that. So that uh, the okay. amendment is that. Yes, if, Mr. President, uh, we accept. commits bribery, extortion, or where the violation is done deliberately and maliciously, uh, it should be uh, punishable regardless of, the regardless of the purpose. Yes, Mr. President, we accept. Any objection? Uh, on the same page, between lines 28 and 29, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> insert the, the following. Section 20, Section 13 of Republic Act 9485 is renumbered as Section 20 and will now read as follows. We accept, Mr. President. An objection. On the same page, on line 32. On line 32. Uh, insert the following, section 21, period. Section 14 of Republic Act 9485 is renumbered as section 21 and now read as follows. 
We accept, Mr. President. An objection, Irina. On page 15, before line 1, uh, insert the following. Section 22 period, section 15 of Republic Act 9485 yeah. is renumbered as section 22 and will now read as follows. We accept, Mr. President. Any objection? Still on the same page on line 21. Section 23. Section 23. A new section 23 is hereby incorporated, is hereby <laughs> included in Republic Act 9485 to read as follows. Accepted, Mr. President. Any objection? Any That's on 921. Um, on the same page between line 28 and line 29. <clears throat> Insert the following, section 24. Sec a new section 24 is hereby incorporated in Republic Act 9485 to read as follows. Accepted, Mr. President. Any objection? Any none. <clears throat> um, on page 16, before line 1, insert the following, section 25. Section 25 is hereby incorporated in Republic Act 9485 to read as follows. Accepted, Mr. President. An objection and approved. <coughs> On uh, same page, uh, line 7 include the following. Section 26 period, section 16 of Republic Act 9485 is renumbered as section 26 and will now read as follows. Accepted, Mr. President. Any objection? On, still on the same page, between lines 14 and 15, insert the following. Section 27, period. Section 17 of Republic Act 9485 is renumbered as section 27 and will now read as follows. Accepted, Mr. President. Any objection? On line 18 on the same page, uh, uh, insert the following. Section 28, period, section 18 of Republic Act 9485 is renumbered as section 28 and will now read as follows. Accepted, Mr. President. Any objection? And on, on the same page, line 22, uh, uh, insert the following. Section 29, period section 19 of Republic Act 9485 is renumbered as section 29 and will now read as follows. Accepted, Mr. President. The title. Any objection or not approved? And finally, the title of the measure is, uh, is proposed to be amended by replacing the word expanding to amending. Yes, uh, Mr. President. We so accept. that it will now read an act amending Republic Act 9485 otherwise known as the Anti-Red Tape Act of 2007, creating for the purpose the Business Anti-Red Tape and Competitiveness Bureau and for other purposes. Accepted, Mr. President. Any objection? That's the end of our individual amendment. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much to the Honorable Gentleman from Iloilo. Thank, Thank you, we, sir. Can we make an omnibus uh, styling amendment uh, to avoid the uh, phrase we'll now read as follows? Can we just say is amended to read as follows. Is that, is that acceptable? Yes. Okay. yes Mr. If there's no objection, uh, my omnibus uh, motion to amend is uh, adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, may we now recognize Senator Payne Lacson. Senator Lacson is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the amended copy of 
a copy as of May 31, 2017, which is the reference of uh, all these individual amendments of the substitute bill amending Senate Bill number 1311 under Committee Report number 33. If the uh, distinguished sponsor will oblige, this representation has a, has a couple of amendments. Uh, yes, Mr. Under I, I welcome the amendments of Senator Larson. Being, by the way, the principal author of the anti-red tape law and as well as principal author of this measure. Under Section 10, Paragraph 2, <coughs> automatic approval and or extension of permits and licenses. And uh, under Section 12A, Streamlined Procedure for Securing Fire Safety Clearance. Uh, as per submission of the Bureau of Fire uh, Protection, Mr. President, under their current system of Bureau of Fire Protection or new, new BFP citizen charter on securing fire safety inspection certificate or FSIC, as well as, as the fire safety evaluation clearance FSEC, an applicant would be able to secure an FSIC within a maximum of three days. Under the same citizen charter, an applicant would be able to apply for the renewal of an FSIC within a maximum period of two days and would also be able to apply for an FSIC for the purpose of renewing business permit within a maximum period of one day. This is the submission of the Bureau of Fire Protection. That is why uh, when the distinguished sponsor uh, proposes that we extend the period uh, to 15 days, I, I uh, was questioning that, uh, that proposal, Mr. President. And so, my proposed uh, individual amendments are as, are as follows. On page 7, line 12, <coughs> delete the word and figure 30 days, and in lieu thereof, insert 10 days. Uh, Mr. President, um, allow me to explain to the good sponsor of the amendment. On the highly technical applications, there are certain government agencies, SEC, DNR, na masinsinan po namin nakausap, and other government monitoring agencies, na they mentioned to us that they will have a very difficult time um, complying with the with the 10 days po, uh, 10 working. That's why. Um, if the honorable gentleman would, would be all right, um, we, we don't mind bringing down the time, the, the date. If, if it's all right with the good gentleman, uh, your honor, Mr. President, that instead of 10 working days, we can do it from 30, we can bring it down to 20 working days. That's, that is four weeks uh, for them to comply with uh, or to come out with the permittings, uh, Mr. President. I appeal to the honorable gentleman, because my worry, Mr. President, really, <coughs> Because my, my worry, uh, Your Honor, Mr. President, is uh, we, not, might, we might not be able to implement this on certain government agencies. Maraming kaso kasi this has a penal provision. This is now has a penal provision. We can now file charges to those who do not act within the time frame. Uh, and the position of the SEC uh, has, is basically, it mentions that on highly technical applications, um, Yes, it goes beyond the mere checking of completeness of documentary requirements. Because you have to not just look at the doc documentary requirements. Many of these people have to inspect the areas. Uh, like for example, if you're going to build a petrochemical plant, um, you need to have highly technical people to visit the area, study the designs and proposals. And as the SEC had said, accreditation of appraisal companies an accreditation of credit rating company agencies and accreditation of external auditor and auditing firms uh, before certain uh, approvals can be given. So um, may I ask for a one minute suspension, Mr. President, to confer to my good colleague and, and uh, uh, session suspended.
Session is resumed. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, um, before we uh, tackle the amendment of Senator Laxon, we conferred and he, allows, he is allowing me to read this particular amendment uh, that he's proposing as an ulterior amendment, Mr. President. <clears throat> On page 3, line 16, insert under the, this is under the uh, definition of terms, uh, section on the definition of terms. Insert a new subparagraph J to read as follows. Uh, highly technical application, uh, dash, an application which requires the use of technical knowledge, comma, specialized skills, and slash or training in the processing and slash or evaluation thereof, period. Uh, Mr. President. J. It's paragraph J. Any any objection? Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, after consulting with the SEC and representative, of course we, didn't, we we read letter. The yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So that should be automatic now. Okay. Uh, after consulting with the uh, representatives of the SEC, Mr. President, uh, I wish to propose the following amendments. On page seven, line twelve, delete the word thirty. Word and figure, 30, and in lieu thereof, insert 20 in word and figure, Mr. President. We accept, Mr. President. Any objection? It is not approved. On page 7, same page, line 13, delete the word and figure 30, and in lieu thereof, insert 20 in word and figure, Mr. President. We accept, Mr. President. So we're changing the rule now from 30 to 20. 20 even, days, yes, so Mr. President. So even the extension. Any objection? Days. I need not read the uh, the new paragraph, section 10, paragraph 2. Uh, it's understandable anyway, Mr. President. Yes, On page 9, line 6, delete the word and figure 15. And in lieu thereof, insert 10. We accept, In Mr. word President. and figure. <coughs> we accept, Mr. Line President. what, sir? Page, page 9. That's page 9, line 6, Mr. Line President. Line 6, okay. Any objection? Hearing none. No further amendments, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President, and I'd like to thank uh, Senator Laxon for patiently uh, any, uh, any waiting for the bill and, uh, and helping us amend it. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move to close the period of individual amendments. Any objections? Uh, Mr. President, uh, before we do that, may, may we uh, ask uh, the 
the uh, body to give us a few days, maybe till tomorrow, to we come up with a clean copy so that we can make a review to make sure that uh, it is all uh, in order, Mr. President, before we close the period of amendment, individual, yes. individual amendment. We have no objection, Mr. President. I withdraw my motion. Uh, Thank you. Uh, therefore, the motion is not really a motion. We ask that the Senate Secretariat uh, furnish the members with uh, a clean copy by tomorrow. And in the meantime, uh, suspend the consideration of Senate Bill 1311. Thank you. Under Commission Report 33. Hearing none, we suspend consideration. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Majority Leader. Mr. President, um, Senator uh, Chis Escudero, the Chairman of the Committee on Education, Arts, and Culture, will sponsor several House bills and two Senate bills pertaining to the conversion, creation, and renaming of schools in various parts of the country. So similar to what we did previously, Senator Escudero will deliver an omnibus sponsorship on the measures. However, for purposes of interpolation and approval on second and third reading, we will be taking up, we will be taking it up one at a time as uh, we have done before. So I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. So with the permission of the body, I move to transfer from the calendar for ordinary business to the calendar for special orders the following house, the following bills. House Bill 3179 under Committee Report 124. House Bill 5146 under Committee Report 127. House Bill 5147 under Committee Report 128. House Bill 5148 under Committee Report 125. House Bill 5149 under Committee Report 129. House Bill 5150 under Committee Report 126. House Bill 2737 under Committee Report 123. House Bill 5151 under Committee Report 130. Senate Bill 1103 under Committee Report 131. Senate Bill 884 under Committee Report 132. House Bill 4469 under Committee Report 133. House Bill 4597 under Committee Report 134. And House Bill 400 under Committee Report 135. Uh, any objection? Hearing none, approved. Mr. With the permission of the body, I move to consider the House bills that I mentioned and the, Senate, the two Senate bills, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Twelve, thirteen. Mr. So President, uh, may we ask the Secretary to read the short title of the measures? Secretary, please do so. House Bill Number 3179, an act extending the deadline for compliance of Mendori State College of Agriculture and Technology with the requirements of the Commission on Higher Education for conversion into a state university. House Bill Number 5146, uh, an act providing for the compliance requirements for the establishment of the Compostela Valley State College. House Bill number 5147, an act converting the Talisay City College and the City of Talisay Province of Cebu into the Talisay City State College. House Bill number 5148, an act renaming the Iloilo, Iloilo State University of Science and Technology as the Iloilo State University of Fisheries, Science and Technology and extending the deadline for compliance with the requirements of the Commission on Higher Education. House Bill number 5149, an act extending the deadline for the compliance of Cotabato City State Polytechnic College with the requirements of the Commission on Higher Education for, the co for conversion into a state university. House Bill number 5150, an act effecting the transition into a state university of Surigao State College of Technology, Siargao National College of Science and Technology, and Surigao del Norte College of Agriculture and Technology. House Bill number 2737, an act extending the deadline for compliance of the Northern Iloilo State University with the requirements of the Commission on Higher Education for conversion into a state university. House Bill number 5151, an act extending the deadline for compliance of the Mountain Province State Polytechnic College with the requirements of the Commission on Higher Education for its conversion into a state university. Senate Bill number 1103, 
an act establishing Polytechnic University of the Philippines Sablayan Campus. Senate Bill Number 884, an act establishing Polytechnic University of the Philippines San Juan Campus in the city of San Juan, Metro Manila. House Bill Number 4469, an act separating the Tublay School of Home Industries Extension in Barangay Tublay Central, converting it into an independent national high school to be known as Tublay National Trade Trade High School and appropriating funds. Therefore, House Bill Number 4597, an act establishing a national high school in Barangay Concepcion, Dos, in the second district, city of Marikina, Marikina to be known as SSS National High School and appropriating funds. Therefore, House Bill Number 400, an act establishing a national high school in Barangay Pasong Tamo, Quezon City, Metro Manila. House Bill 400, Mr. President. All right. So, Mr. President, to sponsor the measures, may we ask Chairman of the Committee on Education, Senator Francis Escudero, be recognized to sponsor. Okay. To Senator Escudero is recognized to sponsor Thank you, Mr. the Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, with the permission of the body, may I ask that the explanatory notice contained in the original Senate and House bills, respectively, be considered as the sponsorship speech of the measures enumerated by the Secretary General, without prejudice to the submission by Senator um, J.V. Hercito of his sponsorship speech into the records insofar as Senate Bill Number 1103 and 884 contained in Committee Reports Number 131 and 132, respectively. So moved, Mr. President. Any objection to the motion? Hearing none, approved. Mm. Mm. Mr. President, uh, with that, I move to suspend consideration of uh, the following House bills, 3179, 5146, 5147, 5148, 5149, 5150, 2737, 5151, 4469, 4597, 400, and Senate bills 1103 and 884 um, with the sponsorship uh, speeches in, inserted into the records, Mr. President. Any objection? Getting none approved. Thank you, Mr. President. Now. Um, Suspend consideration, John Deva. Yes, okay. we suspended consideration. All right, thank you, Mr. President. I move to transfer from the calendar for <coughs> ordinary business to the calendar for special orders. Senate Bill 1527 under Committee Report 136. An objection. Hearing none, approved. I move to consider Senate Bill 1527 under Committee Report 136. An objection. Hearing none, approved. May we ask Secretary to read the title of the measure. An act recognizing the British School Manila as an educational institution of international character granting certain prerogatives conducive to its development as such and for other purposes. Mr. President, to sponsor the measure, may we ask the Chair of the Committee on Education, Senator Chisa Scudero, to be recognized to deliver his sponsorship. Senator Scudero is recognized. Mr. President, again, to abbreviate the proceedings, may I ask that we insert as, as the sponsorship speech of the measure the explanatory notice contained in Senate Bill Number 1527, without prejudice to the author inserting into the records his sponsorship remarks. So moved, Mr. President. And who is the author? Senator uh, Trillanes. Senator Trillanes. If yes. he may want to, he yes, can. Yes, sir. To insert into the record. Yes. Any objection? Hearing none approved. Thank you. With that, Mr. President, to give time to the members, uh, as we did with the other um, House bills, to give time to the other senators to study the proposed measure <coughs> and uh, go over the sponsorship speeches, I move to suspend consideration of Senate Bill 1527 under Committee Report 136. Any objection? Hearing none approved. <coughs> Mr. President, I move to transfer from the calendar for ordinary business to the calendar for special order, Senate Bill 1528, <coughs> under Committee Report 137. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. I move to consider Senate Bill 1528, under Committee Report 137. Any objection? May we ask Secretary to read the title of the measure. Please do so. An act establishing the Department of Culture, appropriating funds, therefore, and for other purposes. How about it? <laughs> <laughs> May we ask the Chair of the Committee on Education, <laughs> Senator Escudero, be recognized to deliver his sponsorship speech, uh, <coughs> Department of Culture. Senator, Senator Escudero, Secretary. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, again, the same motion. May I ask that the explanatory note is, con is contained in the original Senate bills filed by the following authors, namely Senators Binay, Aquino, and Legarda, be considered 
as the sponsorship speech of the measure without prejudice to the submission and insertion into the records of their sponsorship remarks should they decide to do so. So move, Mr. President. Senator Dillon is recognized. Mr. President, uh, it is with regret that I cannot agree with the motion. This is an establishment of a department. We allowed the, uh, uh, read the uh, insertion into the record of the, explanat of the uh, explanatory notes to the previous bills because these are really local bills. But in this particular case, this is an establishment of a department. So maybe uh, yeah, there is reason that uh, we should really hear the sponsorship speech, mm -hmm. what it is all about, how much it will cost, et cetera, et cetera. We will do so, Mr. President, comply with the request of our minority leader and communicate with the authors, principal authors of the measure, Mr. President, Your Honor, because they had intended to deliver the same and simply insert it into the records. We will comply, Mr. President. We'll agree to a motion um, to that effect by our distinguished minority floor leader. So In that case, Mr. Okay. President, I move to suspend consideration. Are we withdrawing the motion now, pre previously made by Senator Scudero? Yes. yes. Okay, so the yes, motion sir. is withdrawn. Thank you. And then I move to suspend consideration of Senate Bill 1528 okay. under 137. Any objection? Is Hearing none approved. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Gusto mo na rin magpalit ng committee. Session suspended. Meron? Pwede na? Di ba? I will do it into the record that I explanatory note of <laughs> 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 Yeah. <coughs> um, <coughs> session is uh, Mr. President, I move that we adjourn the session until 3 o'clock in the afternoon of Tuesday, August 15, 2017. So, an objection there being none. Session is adjourned until 3 o'clock in the afternoon of Tuesday, August 15, 2017.